Okay guys, this is Tom Holland for Field Target Tech. I know my face isn't on here, but my face is ugly anyway. So, um, this is my press. Um, before I get started on how this all works and my process, uh, we're going to go to the, the board and I'm going to show everyone. Everyone's been asking what OGIV means when it is related to one half OGIV, three quarter OGIV, uh, one OGIV, 1.5 OGIV. And I'm going to explain that right now on the board. So we're going to take off. We're going to go to the board. I'll explain that and then we'll be right back. Okay, guys. Um, I, a couple of you guys have asked over uh, on some of the forums and some guys didn't know what OGIV meant as compared to what it means for a bullet or a pellet. Um, what this, excuse my poor drawings again, what this means you hear me speak or refer to one half OGIV, three quarter OGIV generally, and then you have one 1.5. What that means is half the diameter of the pellet is the height of the pellet. So one half the diameter from where the curve starts is one half the diameter of the pellet. For a three quarter OGIV, it's three quarters of the length of the pellet. So this distance from here to the tip is equivalent to three quarters of the distance of the width of the pellet. Same thing with one. One means it is a full pellet width or bullet length longer than the width. So this is the same as this. Doesn't show another drawing due to my crappy artistic skills. Now, same thing when you have 1.5. If this was another diameter pellet next to it, it would go over here for half. This is one and a half times the diameter of the pellet. Just wanted to clear that up. We're going to go to the workbench right now, and I'm going to show you how the swaging press operation works from start to finish, from cutting a core and some of the tools that I've made to... Uh, to use for that so stick around we're going to go to the workbench let me move all the cameras and lights everything around and we'll be, we'll be back in a minute okay guys um this is the press um and this is the lead wire that we use uh this is only a piece i don't have the whole thing now the dies screw into a ram this ram as it works goes up and the two halves basically squish the pellet and bleed the lead out in the back here of a little tiny hole um, let's see if I can show that to you guys and you can see the little tiny bleed hole there that's where the lead bleeds out and pieces like this uh, bleed off so you get the proper weight um, the first thing I do before I set any of this up is we have to cut the wire accurately uh, in even increments so that when we pr put the lead in this press in this die and then swage it, um, it it will be more consistent each time and I made this kind of funky tool here with adjustments on it where I can move this in and out and I can cut each each core relatively quickly and I could do a whole bunch of these so I'm not going to demonstrate a whole bunch of these at all I'm just going to cut enough for me to show the process and that's it and that's that's all we do um, what I like to do is in the back over here I have a little piece of plastic with a nail sticking out of it with a little bit of um, swaging loop and what I like to do is get a little bit on my finger, very, very little, and then take the tin and wipe it around the tin, all on a thin coat, all the way around. Because I found that when we, you lose lube on your fingers and you put too much on, that is a big problem with these. Uh, and I'll show you what happens with that in a little bit. But I just put that in a tin, I'll put this, I'll put the lid on, tumble them around shake them around before I even start so they all have a nice thin um, 
wipe of lube on it. Now, the the top of this uh, press, this, this is the die. Let me show you the die first. And this is a three-quarter ogive. And it's a little tricky to get the bottom punch out. And I'll show you how to adjust this so bad things don't happen, guys. If you don't use this right, this is a $480 die and punch set. If you mess this up just once, you just wreck this. And you wrecked it, you have it, you bought it, you got to buy another one. Um, what I like to do, what you want to prevent is, first of all, this, this stays in, in the ram. And as I move this, you can see this is the piece where the die goes up and down. And basically what happens is these two pieces come together and squish the lead. Now, before we start, I adjusted this to make a 15 grain, three quarter ogive hollow point. Um, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to get kind of close, but that is the hollow point tip for uh, this punch. As you can see, it's very, very fine. It's very, very tiny. So when, you set, when I set this up, I put this in here and I easily and slowly pull the handle and watch what happens to that. Now, the handle might be in the way, but the, re the, the die comes up and now the bottom punch starts moving with it. Now, when you adjust this, you want to make sure, particularly when you're making a very light pellet, you don't want to call do what's called crashing this. You don't want these two to meet ever. If they meet, chances are you're going to ruin one or both of these, and the smaller, thinner one, this, will get stuck in this die. So you do not want to do that. So what I do, um, when I started making ultra light pellets to start with, I would adjust the die this way with the handle all the way down so that there's no way that these two are going to hit together whatsoever. So this is adjusted right now, like I said, for a 15 grain pellet. And that's particularly, like I said, with the lighter weights, you want to make sure that that doesn't crash. So I like to do this when I'm making a really, really light pellet of like eight grains or something like that, where these two punches can get dangerously close. And as I said, if they get too close, you're going to ruin both of them. And there goes a $480 die right down uh, the tubes. So we put this in here. We drop the die in. And I'll show you a dry run on how this goes together without a pellet in it. You pull the handle down. As you see, the die goes up. The punch hits. The lead gets squished. The nice cam action of the bottom of this uh, Corbin press uh, is way more efficient than a than any reloading press would be. And that's it. The weight of the pellet is adjusted by changing the height of this punch. And when you change the height of this punch, as I said, you want to make sure that that bottom punch does not crash into this because you will destroy this die. And it does, with this particular press, it doesn't take a lot of pressure to wreck it. Years ago when I first started swagging, I had a nice brand new $200 die, not like this one. It was a different die and I blew it up and it actually split in half and exploded into about four pieces. Um, I was wearing safety glasses. I was very lucky I didn't get hurt, but it was, uh, it was a, an expensive learning experience. So that's uh, a very large thing to remember. So after these things are rolled around a little, all it's to the process as you take the piece of lead, now I have this pre-measured with my little cutter thing that I made there to cut them all the same size so that the swaging process is all consistent from one to the next. Um, what you want to do is you want to put this in here and just bring the handle back a little bit and get that started. And that's it. Get your hand out of there. Now what happens is you push this down and the cam action of the bottom of this press, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll show that action, that mechanical action in a minute. 
and you just press slowly down until it bottoms out. I like to hold it there for a count of two or three. Bring it back up again, nice and easy. And now you can remove it. And now you have a very, very finely made pellet that is 15 grains or thereabouts within probably about four tenths of a grain or so. Four, four hundredths of a grain. So these will all end up being like 15.02, 15.04, 15.06, somewhere around there. And basically that is all there is to setting this thing up, particularly like I said, so you don't crash them together. And that's it. And as you can see, the wire gets bled off in the back, as this just did from the other one. Hold it down for a second, bring it back up, take it off, perfectly formed pellet. Now, what you don't, what a mistake that a lot of people make is they put too much lube onto this. And what that does is you get something called hydro lock. And what will happen is, I'm going to show you exactly what's going to happen. We're going to take a little bit of this, a little bit too much of this, and we're going to put it on the end of, and this is just so I can demonstrate it, um, wipe my, off my fingers. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that into the punch, and like I said, that's in excess. Now you might hear a sound with this, you'll hear it squish. And then something happens like a hydraulic sound. Oh, didn't really do it. But when the pellet comes out now and you go and look at this, as you can see, that point is very much deformed. And as you can see from a pellet that I just made without the swage, without the swatch loop you can see the clear difference now don't be alarmed if this happens it's not the end of the world you throw that pellet away you just clean this off a little bit clean the water and it might take two or three uh, slugs I don't have a lot of them in there so it might take two or three slugs to get the loop off of it and back onto uh, to where it was and now we have a perfectly swatched pellet as compared to one that has too much lube on it it's a big mistake a lot of people make and they can't understand why the point of this is um, deformed and basically what I just did that is the whole process of swatching a pellet with this particular with this particular press takes a little bit of oomph to get the, the hollow point part out, but they're all good and consistent. Excuse my head in the way. I got some stuff here that just got a little bit in the way. Now, this is able to do it with very easy pressure as compared to a reloading press because of the cam action down here of this whole mechanism, as you can see. And as you can see how the mechanism works, it's a cam action in the back, and then it pushes the ram up using kind of a cam action. And you can see the way that kind of works. So it's on a hinge in the middle, and as this pulls down, the cam action brings the ram up, brings this center part up into the press. And that brings the die up until it bottoms out completely. Um, and that's what makes this press probably a lot more um, expensive, number one. But it's a, a much easier press to use with, I, I could do this with two, one or two fingers. That's how easy it is to actually swage this particular pellet. Um, that's all there is to it. I have some more dies and some more punches coming. Uh, they were not too promising in uh, either the styre or the uh, TM-1000, I was a little bit disappointed. But again, they had some promise, and I probably can remedy that by putting a different base punch on uh, the bottom of the pellet. 
Uh, this is a homemade flat punch I made just to make do until uh, I get the real punch coming. But I have a 2S Ogiv uh, point coming, uh, die coming. Um, I'll be able to make a hollow point or a solid point with it. A solid point is basically the same, the same process as this, except there isn't a little bit of a, a nub on the end of the extractor punch. You can just take it right off and throw it in the bin. But uh, I have several different base punches coming yet. I have a rebated boat tail, a cup base, and a flat base. So, uh, like I said, they didn't do too well in the rifles, but I tried them out of the 1720T pistol and they worked very, very well. So this 15 grain pellet worked excellent in the 15, uh, the 1720T. Um, that's about all I have for now. I know one or two guys wanted to see this because they, have, they were having some problems with their particular presses. Um, I just wanted to show how easy and uh, simple it is to do with the equipment that is meant for it. Um, I understand that guys that are using a regular reloading press, they have two processes to do and they have to cut something off in order to do another process. Um, I'm not quite sure how that works. I haven't seen that operation uh, in full yet, but I'm going to see if I can find something like that. Maybe I can link it onto this video, but that's all we got for today. Um, I got everything up and running like my styre with the regulators and everything and we're all good. So that's basically how this swaging press works and all there is to it. So uh, until next time, this is Tom Holland for Field Target Tech.